What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and the time has come. We've officially covered and now with this video it completely wraps it up every single feature length film in the Alien and Predator franchise. It has been tons of fun to be doing these videos. So many people hopped on board the channel and subscribed throughout the course of these videos that came back to see these videos. It was a lot of fun to do them. I'm really grateful to everybody who stuck around and has been enjoying these videos and letting me know their history, their rankings, their favorites in the franchise, what they like about these movies, what they don't like about these movies. It's been a blast. So without further ado, unfortunately, we have to end it with what I think is the worst of the feature films in both the Alien and Predator franchise, and that is 2007's Alien vs. Predator Requiem. Directed by Colin and Greg Strauss, known as The Brothers Strauss, this film is written by Shane Salerno and stars people like Steven Pascal, John Ortiz, Johnny Lewis, Kristen Hager, and more. And before we get too far into this video, I do want to let you guys know that while this is going to be the end of the feature film reviews here on the channel, I figured that I did not want to have the final thing I talk about when it comes down to Alien and Predator, at least for now, be this movie. So there were actually a handful of short films that were made for the Alien franchise at its 40th anniversary of just a few years ago. So I'm actually going to go rewatch all of those and uh, do a, a video for you guys on that as well. So we can at least end things on a little bit more of a positive note because today we're talking about 2007's Alien vs. Predator Requiem, also initially known as AVPR. This is the sequel to the original Alien vs. Predator that came out a few years later, but takes place directly after the events of the last one. At the very start of the film, we once again see the Predator from the last film that died and had a chestburster come out of his chest that was the hybrid. A lot of people, I believe, call it the Predalien, which I think is a very silly name, to be honest. But yeah, this Predator-Alien hybrid ends up bursting out of the chest aboard this Predator ship that was leaving the planet at the end of the first film, only for it to cause havoc, kill everybody on board, and caused the alien craft, the predator craft, to come back, crash landing back on Earth. And far, far away, another predator realized this is happening, the character of Wolf, one of the most competent predator characters in all of these films, who sees this is happening and flies from the predator homeworld to come and land on Earth to try to discover what's going on, try to find out where this predator alien creature is, and destroy any xenomorphs that start to, you know, make an appearance over the course of the film. And one of the biggest things that's the biggest struggle for me with this film is the complete lack of narrative. The movie is jam-packed with a bunch of characters that all have a bunch of their own things going on, but ultimately there really isn't a story I can tell you about. The film takes place in a small town in Colorado, and the base gist of this film at its core is that this Predalien caused this predator ship to land, and now it's loose in this small town of Colorado. There are some facehuggers that are starting to appear, which leads to Xenomorphs starting to appear, and all of them are being led by this alien predator hybrid. Throughout the course of the film, the predator wolf lands on Earth and starts to take out various humans that are a threat to him as he investigates and tries to get rid of the evidence of the fact that there were Xenomorphs, predators, or any sorts of aliens on the planet at all. And throughout the course of the film, he's just taking out Xenomorphs and humans that are in his way, leading up to a big final showdown between the Predalien and the Predator Wolf who we're following in this film. And there are tons of humans here in the mix, but there isn't really a story that's driven by any of them. They all have different things going on. You have characters like Steven Pascal and John Ortiz, a cop and an old friend who just came back into town. It isn't really fully said what happened but it seems like Stephen Pascal's character has been gone for a while maybe he was in prison for a little bit maybe he was away for the military they never really fully say what it is but they allude to the fact that he's been gone his younger brother is played by Johnny Lewis the character of Ricky and throughout the course of the film there's a bit of a love triangle situation going on with him Kristen Hager's character Jesse and some other jock character from their high school and so there's this you know the teen love romance bullying element that's going on in the film as well and then the other main character that we kind of focus on throughout the course of the film is Ryko Aylesworth's character of Kelly who is just coming home from the military uh, her husband is there with their young daughter and very quickly 
the husband is killed off and now this woman who just got back from the military is having to run away from the predalien the predator the xenomorphs with her young daughter the, all these characters end up mixing up together at a certain point they end up meeting up and they all essentially are just running from the aliens the entire film and and that is the movie i mean it's hard to even talk about because there is really no plot there's no story that's being driven by these characters there's no story that these characters are trying to achieve there's no goals that these characters are trying to achieve other than the fact that the cop element of this film they're just trying to discover where some of these deaths are kind of occurring what's causing them but I wouldn't even say that that's really the plot of the film it's just things that are happening and that's where this film really falls short now, the two directors of this film, I I'm really mind blown that they gave the sequel to Alien vs. Predator to these directors, but the brothers Strauss, they're mostly known for music videos, and they've worked on some very popular music videos for artists like Linkin Park, 50 Cent, and many more, but the fact that they were gifted, in a lot of ways, in my eyes, the opportunity to direct the sequel to Alien vs. Predator, the film that uses the Alien and Predator hybrid throughout the course of the film, it just blows my mind, because ultimately, their inexperience as narrative-driven film directors ultimately led to being a, a terrible film. It it's an absolute heartbreak that this movie is just as bad as it is. The only thing, and I'll just say it here, the only thing that I can praise this film for genuinely are the practical effects. And even then, there are moments of CGI in this film that I do think is probably some of the worst CGI we've seen in the franchise. But I, I will say that's one thing I can praise the entirety of the Alien and Predator franchise for is that these characters typically are brought to life through practical puppeteer work, animatronics, costume work, and I think that for the most part, this film still showcases really great practical effects. But unfortunately, most of that is muddled and muddied behind really shitty cinematography. This is a film that looks horrendous. The cinematography, the camera work is competent enough but the overall look of the film, the color grading, the saturation is horrid. And going back and rewatching this, I have a pretty nice 4K TV. I have a nice surround sound system. I watch movies usually where I can really see the look of the film. And I watch the 4K restoration of it. This film looks horrible. It, the, it is so dark for 97% of the film. So much of the film takes place at night. And the heavy saturation of how the movie looks leads to it looking muddied and yellow and green and blue at times in this way that just comes off not artistic it comes off gross looking and a lot of that ends up hiding some of these great practical effects there are moments with lightning flashes or different kinds of lighting effects in general that'll lead to you being able to see the predators being able to see the predalium being able to see the xenomorph in the mix of all this and be like okay you can tell that the practical effects that are being utilized here are solid there's a couple of moments where these characters are in good lighting where you can say okay this looks cool but outside of that, this film does not utilize the, the fact that we have some of the coolest ideas in the entirety of the franchise in this movie visually in any way, shape, or form. There is nothing about this film that feels cinematic. There's nothing about this film that feels engaging visually. Because there are films that I can forgive a lesser story for sometimes if you have something about the visual part of the film that at least can grab onto me. And unfortunately, that is not the case here. Even if I can recognize that the practical effects that are used here are good, you just can't see them clearly, which is heartbreaking. And then you add on the fact that you have this you know, meandering, plotless narrative that isn't really even a narrative, that's just characters running away for the majority of the film, all with their own little bit of drama, that really doesn't culminate to anything you ever care for. There's no goals, there's no character arcs, there's, there's nothing. It's just everybody's there to just do random things and run away from the aliens. And it's crazy because the writer of this film, who is uh, Shane Salerno, he would go on to write alongside James Cameron for things like Avatar, The Way of Water. And he's also written for movies like Shaft, the original one with Samuel L. Jackson. He's got a couple of credits to his name, including some video games that I enjoy. But yeah, the fact that he wrote this film and he's the sole writer. Yeah, not a, not a strong right here my friend it, it, it's i hate to put it that way i don't like to completely trash on filmmakers with movies but this is a movie that i think was a beautiful culmination of a lot of fun ideas the last movie directed by paul ws anderson who is already a director that i'm a little hit or miss with he at least created a fun alien versus predator film and he set up the next filmmaker with the fun idea of an alien and and, and predator hybrid I, I won't get over this 
and you just completely throw it in the shitter. You wipe your ass with the idea and you completely throw it in the, in the crapper. Like it, it blows my mind that we have a movie that has probably the most competent Predator character who's taking out Xenomorphs left and right, one of the most badass of all the ones we've seen, and you have the hybrid, and it's just in the worst movie of all time, like one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my entire life. So outside of the film looking horrendous, outside of the fact that you have a plotless meandering movie that's taking place throughout the course of it, the fact that you can't even see the practical effects, well, what works here outside of the practical effects, I do think there are some cool moments of action. There are some cool moments with the Predalien in particular that I did find to be pretty cool. And I would say that those were my biggest highlights going back and revisiting it. Outside of that, when it comes down to our characters, again, they're hollow there's nothing to them but man the performances here aren't great and some of these actors and actresses are people i've seen in other things and have enjoyed in plenty of things and it's one of those things where you can recognize this comes down to direction this comes down to what they were told to do and that's something i always try to tell people when they will dog on an actor for a really bad performance in one movie when they have a lot of other movies that they give good performances in is that it really comes down to the vision of the director and if they're told to act a certain way to be a certain way and they're doing these takes over and over again it'll lead to these just like really forgettable or weak performances from actors that otherwise are pretty solid and i think that's exactly what you have here not to say everybody in this film is solid there are some actors here that I've never seen in anything else and honestly probably for good reason but yeah guys that's my thoughts on Alien vs Predator Requiem you guys if you've been watching these videos know I've been doing deep dives talking about all the lore elements talking about all the characters and what's going on and talking about the various story elements of these films and, and co connective tissue to other films I think at the end of the day Alien vs Predator Requiem is not only a bad movie it's not only a bad sequel it's just it's almost offensively bad in the way that it completely discredits the franchise. It completely discredits like the excitement that people would have for these. And, and, and for, you know, no surprise that we haven't gotten another one in a long time. But speaking of which, to wrap this up, Fede Alvarez, who recently did Alien Romulus, is actually talking to the studio or has at least made note of the fact that he would love to direct an Alien vs. Predator film alongside Dan Trachtenberg, who did Prey just a few years ago. I think this would be phenomenal, and I honestly think it would probably be the best written and most exciting Alien vs. Predator film that we have ever gotten. It's been long enough since we've gotten an Alien vs. Predator film. I think that we need one that really solidifies itself in canon, that honors the Alien franchise and the Predator franchise, and I think with two really strong directors co-directing a film like that, you could have a fantastic, fantastic movie there. And so that's just my thoughts on this movie, on this franchise. I hope we get more. Look forward to the Alien short film reviews that I'm gonna be doing for the ones that came out at the 40th anniversary of Alien. I look forward to wrapping things up on a little bit more of a positive note, but I gotta ask you guys, where does Alien vs. Predator land for you? Do you like this movie? Do you not like this movie? Are you a fan of what they did here? Whatever the case may be, I don't even know what to say about this movie anymore. This is just heartbreaking heartbreaking is the best way i can put it i'm looking forward to any and all thoughts down below thank you so much to everybody who stuck around for these videos thank you so much for everybody who tuned in for these videos anybody who subscribed through my time of covering the alien and predator films it has been a blast to talk about these movies with everybody i hope these videos grow over time and i hope that you'll stick around for more reviews of older films like this i have plenty of series i have yet to cover it's one of the most beautiful things about doing a youtube channel about movies there's so much i've already covered in terms of new releases small releases older releases niche films there are so many films i've covered and there are still so many big franchises like these that i've yet to cover that i look forward to going back revisiting and having videos for here on the channel and i look forward to all of you guys joining alongside me to talk about those movies so a big thanks to you guys for watching and i'll see you beautiful people in the next one Bye bye